G'day guys, today I wanted to talk about the Plague Doctor Mask. Iconic and kind of a bit stereotypical I guess. All about the medieval period a lot of people seem to think. Well let's take actually a little bit of a look at the truth behind these. That's all coming up. Okay, so when did these things come in and who actually invented them? Well, the truth is actually a lot more interesting than perhaps you might realize. These were not in fact invented until the year 1619. And they were invented by a chief physician for Louis XIII, a man named Charles de Lume. At that time, there was a great deal of disease going on. There was a plague, and in fact, it was spreading from, uh, if you like, typically, plague doctors wore not only a mask, something similar to this, but this is, let's face it, this is actually more styled on Venetian uh, modern ideas from around the sort of 19th century, as opposed to what was actually happening back in the early 17th century. But the masks themselves were designed around the concept of miasma, and that is that disease spread through bad smells. And they, diseases and plagues and pestilences were uh, sent from God to punish people from their sins. So plague doctors, uh, such as Charles, decided to have these and that they thought they could counteract the impact of these bad airs, the miasmas, um, with things like sweet smelling herbs such as um, mint, sage, rosemary, put in some oils and perfumes such as myrrh, and that would counteract the effects of these. Plague doctors typically wore um, a, a hat, a coat which was treated with wax, was quite a long coat and boots. They also had a cane and the concept of the cane was that they could examine a patient without actually needing to touch them. This is a really really interesting because whilst the concepts of miasmas are uh, a bit of an absurd theory for us today with uh, benefits of science, the reality is that um, by using a cane to examine a patient, your social distancing, we all love that term now, uh, from our patient, and we can look at the patient, we can examine the patient, we can um, have our mask so we're not breathing in the air, which would have in fact contained bacteria. In fact, many of these bacteria weren't even visible to microscopes until the aid of um, electronic microscopes in the 1950s. Interestingly, the hat wasn't there to protect them from the sun, but it was more of a signification that this particular person was in fact a doctor. Now it's really really interesting because a lot of these plague doctors earned themselves a very bad reputation. Not only did they lack clinical skills and not only were they able to um, not only were they struggling to solve the problems of the plague, but indeed, they, um, many of them were not actually trained physicians. So they were suggesting remedies and trying to advocate for so-called cures that really justified logic and science and probably didn't really help 
us uh, to overcome the plague itself. I think it's really important to put ourselves though in the shoes of the people of the time and to understand that um, I think it's very possible these people would have been desperate for solutions. Some of these uh, people experienced entire villages being destroyed by the plague so the diseases would sweep through and many 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 people would die um, and it's, it's really quite horrific. I'm going to be doing a video on the Black Death next week um, and I'd really like to, to peel back a lot of the layers and the myths around uh, how the plague it's in fact did spread and not only the try to address some of those issues but I'd really like to get under the skin of this and to look at um, how in fact we did beat the plague and what was the human cost and what's the legacy of this. It's really really interesting because not only am I a former military person so I spent 14 years in the military but I, in the military my role was that of a medic and I can see the connection between the experiences that humans have had in disaster and in turbulent times and what progress we've made as a race um, on the, the outside of that. So going through, um, we, we, for example, one of the things that we've benefited from in terms of um, the Gulf War in Afghanistan is, is the use of tourniquets and the, the pro, uh, and the progress that we've made around tourniquets and this kind of thing is incredible. Uh, as a result of these, these injuries and, and the as a result of the trauma that's been experienced by many soldiers we've actually progressed and we know so much more now about burns trauma and how do we uh, deal with blast trauma and how does that affect the body there's so much more that we've learned in the last 20 years that we just didn't know before so if you put that into the context of the medieval people of the time then you can understand that these people were in fact on a massive learning curve and trying to understand how all this came together. I think it's really quite fascinating. So that's all coming up next week. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. I've really appreciated your company. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share and I'll catch you in my next video.